Welcome to From an Educator. And this, which is the uh, second or third of a few fail starts, is the show Elephant in the Room, number 73. See you soon. Welcome to From an Educator. I'm Mr. James, an educator. And whew, finally able to get an episode out and after a few failed starts, hopefully I can make it through <laughs> this recording. Uh, this is show number 73, uh, and school has begun. People are busy. I have been incredibly busy. I had, first of all, a busy week last week. Wednesday through Friday, we had classes, um, and it's just getting back to the stamina of having seven classes during the day and trying to make yourself you know, stable enough to go from one grade to the next when they don't go chronologically, basically. So I'll start, at, start off my day with a second grade class. And right after that, I have a fifth grade class. Then it goes back to third grade. And then it goes to fourth grade, which, okay, that makes sense. And then it run, goes back to first grade, then it goes to kindergarten, and then the last huge jump at the end of the day to sixth grade. So it's a very confusing day and one that I have to pre-plan out as far as materials. Uh, I'm a music teacher, and I have musical instruments to use, and different grades use different instruments. But this year, I might try to do something where we use very similar instruments or I might have to uh, rely on the students having self-control, which has not been something I relied on in the past because they do not have self-control. So it's going to be a challenge this year, but I can't move around things like I did in the past. I have no, I have very limited time between classes and it's just a waste for me to be running around, changing seating arrangements, changing instruments. I just want to make sure everything's out there and that students can go and follow orders as far as what to pick up and what to use and when to use it. So I'm gonna to have to set some uh, guidelines and this coming up week, that's what it's about. So welcome back. <laughs> it is currently Labor Day, it's September 6th. I have been cleaning up the uh, place, place where I live and sorting things out and making sure I have things where I need them quickly, efficiently. Uh, I like to do this, you know, a few times a year where say for instance, clothing, you know, where I have my clothing, I might realize I'm not wearing clothes, certain clothes that I just never wear. Well, you know, it might make it to a place where later on it might be for just colder weather or whatever. Uh, and I just put it away, but it might get to a place where I don't actually wear it ever again. And then it's going to goodwill. And that's one of the things that uh, I have to do all the time, find out how I might be changing, like physically, I might be getting bigger or whatever. In some cases I got smaller uh, two years ago and just uh, change things around and also make it so it's easier to get through. I mean, I don't want to have a problem every morning when I'm getting ready to, uh, I'm working out showering and then trying to get dressed as quickly as possible while making uh, different meals or whatever I have to do for the day. It's just one of those things that you need You need to have everything where you can be efficiently and you can grab at it. So this is going to be a very quick episode aside from my ranting I'm doing right now about how things are going. I call it elephant in the room and oh, I hope I'm not peeking there. Okay, let's make sure. I call it elephant in the room because it is a problem that is currently happening in schools everywhere. Uh, or it just seems like it's happening everywhere. And we're gonna go into this in detail, but it is for teachers, and I don't believe my audience in particular is our teachers, but yeah, this is, if anyone wants to know what teachers are going through right now, this is one major thing that we have to deal with. And it's, we're seeing it and it's just going to get worse. Uh, at the end of this episode, I only have one other slide aside from this opening slide and the ending slide. 
on the ending slide, I want to give a uh, a little bit of a futuristic, you know, fictional uh, idea of what the future could be and what I think it might eventually turn into, as far as our education system is concerned, um, and it will put me out of a job and many others until we can find a way to uh, be part of this system uh, that's going to change things. But it will, uh, yeah, it's going to be what I think fixes this major problem that is only going to get worse. Uh, so let's get right into it. So the elephant in the room, and I had to have a picture of an elephant. Does everyone know what that means when someone says, let's discuss the elephant in the room? Elephants are large. Elephants take up a lot of space. If they move, it's a major event. You know, if, if it's inside a house, I mean, elephant is gigantic. It weighs so much. It's it, it, walking in a house. It's going to make a huge sound. It's going to rattle things. And just like a cat behind me, it rattles the floor. An elephant in your house is going to make a mess. And when someone says, let's discuss the elephant of the room, they're basically talking about, let's discuss this major issue everyone is having. And this is the major issue I see right now at schools. Aside from the fact that we have to mask again, and some people are having problems with that, aside from the fact that we have a student population that was remote last year fully and in person, but only half the time and remote for half the year previous before that. So basically they're two years behind, uh, if not even more. Uh, and they're just trying to adjust and it's really hard getting this, these students back together again uh, and not facing issues. <laughs> At least I know who I've talked to uh, this past week, they, they said, yeah, it's, uh, it's becoming an adjustment. But it's, it's not just all of these factors about trying to get back into the year, which is always a problem because of summer slide and the fact that some students don't have schedules. They don't have a routine and we're, we're giving them a routine, we're basically forcing them into a routine. The biggest thing I see happening right now is that schools need people. Schools need people. They need bus drivers, technicians, they need teachers, they need custodians, they need anyone that can help. And we don't have people. Our, our school alone needs half a dozen technicians. And the jobs are being offered. It's just no one is biting. Uh, we need, we've worked our, our way around so we can, we have enough teachers. In fact, some technicians became teachers. Um, we don't know how that's going to work out because sometimes I, I see all the classes in the school as well as a few other UA teachers. And you can basically see kind of how the mood is with the class and how maybe some behaviors are in the class, how the classroom teachers have been handling things. And that's not always the case, but I mean, if you think about it, as a UA teacher, we have to deal with so many so many things going on. I mean, it could be some issue that's happening in one class and another class. And because we're seeing every grade every single day, it's, it's one of these things we, they have to go through us. So we have to find out what's going on. And we try to uh, work with the classroom teachers, but you know they have a busy agenda. And anything I've done has always fallen on deaf ears or they've told me to go to administration, which tries to turn it around and saying it's something that I, I did or it's my problem. For 40 minutes, I guess it's my problem. The rest of the day is someone else. But we tend to want to find a reason for a student's behavior because one student can disrupt an entire class and ruin that entire class. And then you cannot focus on that because the next class coming in is a completely different slate. So 
I have to change my personality almost every 40 minutes. So be a UA teacher, everybody. Or don't, like a majority of people in the world. A lot of people don't want to be teachers. And those that were teachers are leaving. Many people are leaving the profession. People don't want to work. And that's happening everywhere. Restaurants aren't opening or they're closing early. They can't have enough. They don't have, no one has enough workers. And it's just a big, I think it's happening everywhere now. But I mean, as far as for teachers are concerned, that's been happening for a long time because we know how students have become. They've been marketed to. And when I say students, I mean, I'm mentioning, I'm thinking in terms of children. K through six, elementary, middle school, you know, somewhat of high school, but basically those that haven't been able to, you know, get a job and, and, and maintain things. And I wouldn't call them children anyways. I mean, I think as an adult, 18 years old, you're an adult and you can take care. You should be able to take care of yourself somewhat, um, but you should be able to take care of your life things going on, I guess, or, or, you know, at least be able to take care of the hygiene issues and all of this stuff that go on with your life. And we're trying to help all students get to that level where they can actually be self-sufficient and, uh, you know, hold jobs and hold, have relationships and, and friends and such, and be able to do something and find joy in it, but also understand how to do it. So, Schools need people and we don't have anyone applying. And it's, I think the major issue that started this was the fact that, you know, because students, children have been marketed to buy all these things and, and, and everyone has to be equal and all of these things that we push in this society, this this. You know, I'm coming from a point of view of an American. I think we've made out, made students that are very needy and very short attention span. And it, because things are fast, new games come out, new toys, new this, new that. There's a lot of things that have to be taken care of. And students feel, oh, we, I need to get this. I need, I need to do that. And, and it's, it's made up so that they have this need to constantly have to get at things and, and it's, it's have it quick. And I, I need to be satisfied right now. So I need this treat or I need that. And it's, it's been tough on everybody, but this is, our society has been like this for many, many years. And it's just been ramping up because People need to make money. Businesses don't need, to make, need to make money. They need to find a way to resell things over and over again. Even if you're getting the exact same thing, kind of like with uh, cell phones, smartphones coming out, whereas they're getting, they've been at the point where like, we can't make these any faster. So you can just change the outside appearance and say it's something new, but it's basically the exact same thing. You know, the software might have some tweaks to it, but I mean, Honestly, we're, we're getting to the level where it's really hard to sell things now. And they're pulling out all the stops to try to make a sale. What I feel uh, upset about is that because we've made this society, and I say we, and I'm just saying in general, this has happened. And maybe this is capitalism you know, the ugly side of capitalism or whatnot. It's something that we together have lived in a society that has this. And, and I'm talking once again as an American. So uh, for those of us not in the US, I, you probably have, a, you probably have a better situation where you are. Um, we have kind of gone along with the fact that uh, you know, food should be quick you know, lots of flavor, thinking in terms of talking about how I talked previously in this, these episodes about nutrition and such, 
we want things now and they have to be our way, right? We can look up things on our phone quickly. We want the answer right now. Answers aren't even that important. To a lot of people, this is really not important. Oh, what I don't need, I don't need these answers. Give me something that'll entertain me right now. And this generation, I see it over and over about wanting to have something to entertain them. And things seem to not have a lot of value either. And that's a major thing as far as someone who plays musical instruments and has gotten used to the fact that I have to practice to be good at them. I mean, I have to keep up my, uh, my finger dexterity and I have to uh, keep listening uh, to what I, I'm doing and in other songs and such that I have to learn. When you don't respect the instrument, when you don't actually care about all of this stuff, then you probably not, you're not going to invest a lot of time into it. So there goes uh, the interest of trying to get students into an instrument or into practicing, getting better at a skill that I think they can use in other things throughout their life, but they see no value in because it's not giving an immediate reward. That happens, that's happening right now in schools with adults. And, and that's another reason why we're not getting people because they want the rewards up front. They know it's not gonna be easy. They know the children that they're gonna be teaching in some way or another or taking care of are not gonna be uh, respectful all the time. They're not gonna be uh, inclined to care about the process to care about what they're learning. And this is, I'm, I'm saying this is a generalization. I don't like to do these generalizations, but I'm saying in general, there are a lot of students that have basically been a product of the marketing and the issues of, of the society. And I work in a high risk school, uh, low income, and I see them and it's this thing that it's just, it's not a good selling point. You know, it's the money and they're offering, some schools are offering in crazy sign-on bonuses that are making teachers that have been in the, you know, the business for a while feel horrible for the fact that, well, we're maintaining it. We're changing, we're adapting because students are adapting. And yet someone can come in and uh, make twice as much you know, right off the bat because they're willing to do it because they, they, it's, it's such a need right now. They practice, they've gotten a red, they've gotten rid of the uh, praxis tests uh, in this state, which is a test that teachers had to take uh, in order to get licensed. And they completely got rid of it. I paid quite a bit of money for these tests. I think it was like $500. It's like three or four hour tests, two of them. A lot of reading, a lot of studying to, to take these tests. And you're in a, an environment where it's completely quiet and, and it's a camera on you the entire time. So it's, yeah, it's kind of stressful. I think there was a camera on me. I can't remember, but I, it was very strict with how they, they set this thing up, this play, the place I had to go and how certain things they had to make sure I didn't have certain things on the way in and stuff, like pat me down. So yeah, that's done with. So basically, they're even, I think they're, uh, they don't really care about uh, college degrees. I think you can have a little bit of college and basically apply and become a teacher, at least be conditional. So, wow. The, uh, I've heard some, someone recently said, wow, they're going to let anybody in and thinking like, what, what is this going to become? Is it going to, is it going to be is it going to be easy to work around people that, that have, don't have the education and don't have the experience and just basically see this as a paycheck and are just going to try to get that paycheck as long as they can before they freak out and, and, and run away? Uh, how much mess can they do? Well, with lives at stake, like literally like, you know, since everybody's very sensitive now and you know, PTSD is a real thing, they can do a lot of damage. So that is a really big 
issue that is happening. And I think that is the elephant in the room. We need people. Teaching is not glamorous. It is something that we feel driven. I can't, you know, read something or, or go someplace without thinking that, oh, I probably could use this to help talk about this in a class or a private lesson or whatever. So I've always had that. And it just seems like it's, it just applies what, you know, my in, I'm constantly thinking of constantly listening to uh, podcasts I'm constantly trying to better myself. And this is information I can get so I can pass it on and pass it on in my craft. But it's uh, not everybody's cut out for this. And right now, a lot of people are realizing they, they just don't want to do it. And it's too bad because it's, we're feeling it. Um, my, I have these points on a slide I'm looking at right now. And my second major point is the population is exploding and there is little room left. And that's true because people are having kids. And being in lockdown basically probably gave people some time to have more kids. So we're not, <laughs> we're not surprised that in our school, at least, which is an elementary school, that the kindergarten and first graders uh, are giant classes. And they're going to be more because not because of this past lockdown, but for the fact that in general, people are having in the past 10 years, people are having more children. Uh, and it's just, if we don't have teachers to teach these students, I mean, I, we have a limit what we can have in our classes right now. And I can't imagine having 30 students in a class just trying to manage that. It's hard enough, the fact that it's, it's, uh, one and a half times, you know, sometimes twice as many students as I had last year in each class. I can't imagine having, you know, more than that. I mean, 20 is my limit. And I still think that's going to, I think some classes are going to move up a little bit because we still have students transferring into the school, but that's quite a bit. 20 students is, is quite a bit to uh, entertain, entertain because that's what they generally think UA teachers are entertainers for 40 minutes, you know, seven times a day. So there is, there are a lot more people and because there's a lot of people, there should be a lot of jobs to help those people, but the jobs that are open, no one wants like teaching. Uh, and those that are already working there have to maintain order and we have to work twice as much to make things work. As, an, as just an, uh, an aside, basically something that happened this past week at our school, we have quite a situation where it comes to students being picked up. And actually it was last year, I think an average of 50 cars picking students up at the end of the day. And it's gone up to like 60 or 70 cars now. And it actually, aside from the fact we have a nice uh, winding little road that goes into the school, uh, the cars are all the way down the road. I mean, like at least 20 deep down the road. And the speed is still slow because, you know, some issue we're having with uh, the numbering system and, and, and students being called down and, and, you know, miscommunication and definitely not fast enough, but we're going to get better at that. It's just the fact that there's so many of them. There's so many, and this is only going to get worse. Schools are at their limit. We can't have more schools. We can't build a school if we have no teachers. Am I right? So it's getting crazy incentives are getting ridiculous. Like I mentioned, I think I saw one and said that students, uh, teachers would be given a $20,000 sign-on bonus if they signed and, and, and took a job somewhere. Wow, that's, that's crazy money. Uh, I think they probably have to sign a contract for a year, but I'm sure they could try to survive through a year and then just 
quit and get what they would make in a year as a teacher. I think on average in Maine, 38,000. And that's just with like no degree, maybe one year of college, uh, plus this 20,000 that you get extra. If you think about it, that's, uh, that doesn't seem too bad, right? One year of work. But it's, it's things like this, these incentives that it's, it just feels like uh, we want people that, that aren't really going to want the job and that are basically hunting for money. I mean, we all need money to live. And unfortunately, things are getting more expensive all the time. But you have to want to get into this. And that's, the, that's another big elephant in the room. Like, who is working a job they really want? And who's working it for money? And who actually wants to be there? I mean, I think we all have to ask ourselves that, right? Go back a few episodes. I talked about that. <sighs> Money is being thrown at people for attention. Now, I wrote that little point, uh, meaning money is being thrown around because we want someone to pay attention, right? Please pay attention to us. Please come over here. Realize this is a job you want. Yes, I know everyone else is hiring, but you want to work at a school. You'll like it. Children need uh, role models. You can be a role model. You can be this and that and this and that. I don't know. I don't know how they're selling it, but money is a big way to get people to look towards something. And it's just a shame that it comes down to something like that. But it is a mess right now. And we need people. We need, we need it so that everyone's job is a little bit easier and not so easier, but more, I like that we use the word efficient, but everyone's job is, is being able to be done in a way that they want without overdue stress. And if you have enough people working in a district, in a school, then you can actually do your job and not have to do all these ex, you know, auxiliary things or feel like you're working too hard. I mean, a lot of this in my, what I'm doing has to come down to my planning and how to make things work for me because there's, I make my curriculum up every single year from scratch. I take things that have worked in the past and I work them into a different theme and a different uh, rollout plan. But there are things that aren't at the school where if we had extra people, it would make things a lot easier. And having another presence in the classroom all the time would be great. Hiring somebody that can just go around and follow classes. Think if teachers had an extra technician in their classroom, or some teachers have a technician, many teachers don't. If, they had, if everyone had their own technician that, that followed the class around, think of the difference there would be. I just know it's a difference every time in my classroom, there's another person in there that students tend to uh, sit up a little straighter because they know their eyes, they know they're being watched. There's two pairs of eyes on them. But that's my elephant in the room. Schools need people. If you have any questions about that, if you uh, want to refute that, if you want to just talk about that, of course, you can put comments on the YouTube version of this podcast and uh, otherwise find a way to get uh, reach out somehow and uh, solve this problem. That'd be great. Well, yes, I'm right now to the thank you slide, the, the last slide, because that was uh, a quick, almost like a rant show, almost like a rant show. I did want to mention this one thing, uh, and I thought about this because I've always thought about these futuristic ideals or not ideals, uh, but I, I think I've seen this in a movie before. So what do I see education turning into? Well, as far as college is concerned, and I said this when I went to graduate school, the first, first few classes I took, uh, I was also enjoying uh, several MOOCs, which are these massive online uh, classes that you can take. And I said, wow, you know, the MOOC is the way to go in the future. I mean, 
there's an algorithm that that helps correct certain things and and many of the stuff is just you don't really interact with the person it's just videos pre-recorded and i said this is what education is going to turn into because we, we have so many great educators out there that just need to make videos of themselves or just, you know, we can look through, if you have the right algorithm, you can look through YouTube and find the best, greatest minds of the past, who knows how many years they've put videos up from YouTube, you know, you know, you collect, you take an old VHS thing and they convert it to a video, it's on YouTube and just take these great minds and find these great lectures and be like, this, yeah, this basically encapsulate this class and you see those videos, you reflect on it, an algorithm corrects your stuff, there you go. There's a college class. What if you did that for every college class? What if that was just basically someone logging in to a computer and doing that on their own time? And I feel that that's what it's turning into. The brick and mortar is going to go away. Now that college level, that makes sense, right? They've had a lot of online classes for years. I'm thinking this is going to happen uniformly all the way down through uh, elementary. I do think that certain grades need to have social interaction and need to have adults present to show them some of the finer points of, you know, being alive and, and how to kind of maintain ourselves. But like kindergarten, pre-K, kindergarten, first grade, second grade. But I think there can be a transition to, I don't know. And this is the fictional part where it becomes more like cubicles that students go to with a computer, maybe with a way to get snacks and, and, and nourishment. Uh, but basically, almost like students have a job to do. And there will be supervisors walking around to make sure everyone's uh, in compliance and such. But there will also be a lot of psychology behind everything. So people are checked to make sure that they're actually doing something. And if they need some assistance or counseling, they will get that. Uh, but I see education turning into something that has to be more uniform because we do have teachers that are great at what they do. And we have teachers that aren't so great at what they do. And we have a mix of those all the time. And what if they just had some way to figure out, guess what? We have a few teachers, we have, we have a collection of teachers that we think best sell, and I say sell as like teach this material. And we have them recorded and we have them whatever, in, in formats that we can produce digitally and everybody can have the same teacher for this subject, the same teacher for this other subject. So why don't they do that? It kind of reminds me of like a movie like Gattaca or I think I saw this in an episode, a, a Star Trek movie uh, where everyone had their own little place where they learned. But this is what I think is gonna happen. I mean, with artificial intelligence, you know, being improved upon, I think this, this absolutely is going to happen. And it's just one of these things where, uh, you know, a giant warehouse can be turned into a thousand little cubicles. And so there you go. That's, you know, two schools worth uh, of children. Yes, the technology has to be there, but we have great technology like this. And if you, if you take out 90% of the teachers and their salaries and all this stuff. And then you just basically have these supervisors and you have all this technology you can put in there. You're actually saving a lot of money and you're having students learn uniformly. So they all had the same teacher teaching them this certain subject and they all have the expectation to do certain things. Yes, there's so much lost in this fictional sort of like, uh, utopia or dystopia. But I do see society moving into this direction just for the fact that because we're running out of teachers, because people don't want to work these jobs, they have to find a way to do it. And we've, we've already seen the educational platforms, you know, I, some of them I've used last year. Uh, they have a lot of 
good people who put great content on there that can be replicated. And why not? And I'm not saying this is like a, this should happen, but why not have a complete system based upon that? Organizations are thinking about this. There are businesses that are thinking about this. Uh, and teachers like myself should look into being one of those teachers that they they want to uh, use for information or to use to sell one of their classes, basically. So I should want to record myself and do this. I should try to practice things to get better at talking. <sighs> kind of like podcasting, right? But if you think about it, this could be the future of education, an education that you can get anywhere, an education that can be uniform. Everyone can understand what someone's talking about. The big push is here with uh, second language learners and everyone understanding how to teach in a way that is uh, open to all learners. We've, we've been like through this before. It's just a different way they're conveying it this year, but that can be all accomplished uh, with certain digital tools as well. Google's been doing it for many years. So what if Google took over and became the teacher? Just something to think about. It's fictional, but is it really? So thank you everybody. This is show number 73. It's quick. I still have a very busy day of prepping and planning and yeah, figuring out how to uh, make it week number two. But I'll be back and hopefully with Mr. Ritchie, I think we uh, said we'd convene some point uh, this week and yeah, might have a different sort of uh, look to the studio, but we'll still be hanging in there and please hang in there yourself. Take care.